Hi guys, I'm super happy to be here today. We're doing trendy enamel um, painting on beads. So, oh, and I wanted to show how pretty this looks when it's layered. So I've got like a pearl necklace, which they're very popular right now. Mom's been yeah. seeing on Pinterest and we've all been seeing, but uh, we wanted to make this fun, summery, springy um, necklace that is awesome for layering. And I made it so that like you can message. change all the different, you can hook in all along the necklace so it can be all different lengths. So it's adjustable to all your other gold and pearl jewelry. And um, you can do it as a wrap bracelet. And we just picked the best colors for spring and summer. So super excited to get started on that today. I didn't know, is there anything oh. else? What? Your glass is in the... Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we like water. <laughs> yeah, especially when we're under these, under these lights. So, yeah, we've got a bundle today for you, including all of our melon beads in natural brass, and then a bunch of just basically we got everything together for you start to finish to make this necklace. So you don't have to do any guessing. You don't have to look around our website for anything else. You can just buy the bundle and then pick, did we make the paints a bundle too? Or we just have, we'll give you the list of everything that we use today, paints wise. And we can do that yeah. too. Right after we're done, yeah, we, we can could. make it to make it easy for everybody. We could, we'll make that a bundle. And then also you, you can also just pick your favorite colors too because this is very customizable color-wise. So we can go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna hand this over to you so you can show them okay. what's in the kit. All right. This is our bundle today. All right. And all of these melon beads, I think there were, I think you get 32 of them is what we put in yep. the kit. And the big, ribbed jump rings. Now the eye pins, these are actually used as a tool today and that's what I'll be showing you. You get the colorful sole tray and here are all the colors we used. So I think it's probably super really fun. helpful to mention that the beads are solid brass made in the USA. So they're super fine quality and all the parts, everything is made in the USA and it's not imported. Yeah, and it's just going to be um, really nice to work with. The quality is heirloom. I'm just getting all tuned in on our. Sawyer. Peggy says Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Sawyer's feeling better. Finally, that was a long one. All right. So I'm going to open up our color for colorful soul trays. You get two in a pack. And uh, yeah, I'm going to just clip the side and then rip it. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using to line up all of our paints today. We've got nine, yes, nine of them. You can zoom in more if you want. Yeah, we're just zooming out so they can, this is a, yeah. Okay. Alrighty. I'm trying to figure out if I should go through each of the paint colors. I'll, I'll say it as I put them in the tray. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. All righty. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting a good amount of paint going in our tray. 
You guys are gonna hate me because I'm like working from the inside out. So if you're like really linear while I'm putting these paints in the trays, you're gonna die. All right. And keep in mind, you're gonna have to um, do that all the time with your paint tops. Okay. Just get a good amount in there. I can actually watch this part all day. Just you adding paint to the tray. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it like this though. Now I'm gonna put one here instead of going in a line, just to make you guys annoyed. What? <laughs> oh man. But I do that though. I don't know why. I'm weird. You just do it all over. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm subconsciously like picking which colors I like um, together, putting them next to yeah, each other. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure it's something like that. I love seeing our besties on here all the time. We well, do that's... have a little OG group. Ooh, we've used this one so much, I think I'm almost out. Oh, you need another one? Is I it think coral? so. You can tell Sawyer's feeling better. Because he's thinking about his next master class. Oh, yeah, what's he saying? He's asking people for potential suggestions. Ooh. Just leave the coral for last because I'm still looking for Oh, yeah, you're good. I actually. Use that one a lot. Yeah, I have, I have enough in the tray. It's just oh, in case I need more great. for whatever reason. That is what I'm doing, by the way, I realized, as I'm I'm putting the colors, like if I didn't, don't want them next to each other on the necklace, I'm like putting them, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? I think I would do a, so <laughs> <I'm> making... <laughs> Susie, that's funny. <laughs> Seriously, I, I should do that too, I wonder. I always take them out in the row. Mm -hmm. We should do that and see if it annoys you. I'm yeah. the same way. I don't take them out in a row. You don't? No. <laughs> I'm definitely not OCD, that's for sure. What do you think is the worst combo for a couple? OCD and ADHD? Or OCD and OCD? No, that would probably be good if you guys were both OCD, right? Oh, no, but you so might be super OCD clean. about different things. Right. That's true. So you drive each other nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Optimist and pessimist. That's, yes, that That's would. The worst combo. That is yes. the worst combo. <laughs> oh, this is really going to kill us. Now we've got these all even. There's going to just be one hanging out. <laughs> Well, you could probably you could put yeah. glaze in there, right? Yeah, that might help. Just to even it out. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. I do it to balance the weight when I remove the carton from the fridge. Total that is what I do. Oh my gosh, you're so good at realizing why you're doing that. So does Princess Gary. She said I take eggs from the center of the carton and work out for, to keep it from tipping. Yeah, over. balance. That's perfect. Wow. I know. Is that why it always like is heavy on one side for me? These trays like, do look very like a um like egg trays. Very. Well, it's the right season. I know for Easter. Yeah. We we could just pretend we're coloring Easter eggs today with our little beads. <laughs> yep, baby ones. Yeah, little tiny baby Easter eggs. So if you guys are wanting the craft for um Easter, that's actually gonna last and not look too Eastery. Like this doesn't look like an Easter okay. necklace. Oh, what size are the melon beads? Candy's asking, yeah. I believe they're six, six millimeters, is that right? Yeah, six, six like point that. something, I think. The six and a half, six yeah, point five. Six point five millimeters. Okay. I know, I should bring, Mo is like so obsessed with our paint. So she would love with this dying of the metal beads. Okay, so I'm taking our six and a half millimeter melon bead and I just strung it on our um, head pin and this is all we're going to be doing today really is just dipping and letting it dry so go ahead and just roll it 
Oh, I know what I need. I've got it right here, though. A paper towel. This is an important part of the step. So you dip and roll and get your good coating on there and then just put it on its side so it's um, 90 degrees from your table and just tap off the extra on the end there. And then you're going to even it out in the center of your um, head pin and I always just hang it right over the tray like that and it's not touching the paint right now. You guys can't tell from that angle but it's just the perfect size um, for a drawing. And I'm just going to do that over a few times. Alrighty. So string your melon bead and roll. And I put a decent amount of paint in each of these trays, so do as many as you want. I find that it works best with the head pin just because when you go for this tapping action, um, you're not having to tap around. Like we tried it with an eye pin as well, um, but that was a little more difficult when you're trying to get the excess paint off. And you'll get paint on your head pins, but that's fine because we're just using them as a tool. Go ahead and just save them for um, all your, for yeah all, all your, your enamel yes yeah, for all your enamel beading projects and Mackie how many coats of enameling did you do on these I only did one so they could be really vibrant if you kept going you dip it one but for I love, sure I love this translucent look that you have here. yeah because I liked seeing I loved seeing the texture mm-hmm um, on each of these beads, like the melon element of it. But yeah, you could um, just make it solid by layering. And I would um, do a layer and then let it dry, you know, and then just keep on, keep on layering up. And Maureen was asking, could you also just stick it in fire, styrofoam to let it dry? It but we stay at the top though. Right. We need it to stay just um hanging it the way you're doing it <clears throat> is about the best idea because then it can dry evenly and it's Yeah, not we tried it. we did try a few different things. And um Ooh, I love how the weight is looking on that. Yeah. And your bundle does come with the trays as yep. well. Yes. Right? It's literally everything you need to make this project. So and if you just wanted two colors, you could do that. But what looks best for this is like the variety of colors. But you could spend a second and think about like what colors you love together. And how far are those beads over the paint? They're not even coming close to no, touching. No, I'll paint, show. Right? Well, I don't really. You don't have the to. Camera, do but... I trust you. Yeah, the wells like... are pretty deep. Yeah, the wells are deep. <clears throat> it's oh, so fun and relaxing. So, Lori, I taught a master class on recycled beads from mm -hmm. Ugly Jewelry. And I hope you go back on the Vintage Exclusive Facebook Live for the, um, for the backstage pass holders, and you'll find that master class. It's really amazing. I love recycling ugly jewelry. That was a fun class, wasn't it, Mac? Oh, yeah. Super fun. Dang, this is so relaxing. I'm just going to make, like, I want to sit here and just make 20 of them each mm -hmm. in each color, but I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that all. I'm just going to do one of each. Cindy made it in time. Yay. So happy to have you here, Cindy. I'm just doing one of each of these colors, but on the necklace, I did, what did I do? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 26 beads are on the necklace and it's a perfect length for um, 
making a triple wrap bracelet, um, as well as a necklace. But you can always add more links if you need it to be a little bit bigger. There's enough links for you to add a little extra. And you can also hook that anywhere in the chain and let the back yep. dangle down your... Yeah, exactly. Between, between your shoulder blades. And if anybody who's watching wants to just pop in and wave, you can. Don't feel, just feel free to just say anything in the comments. Matthew loves answering questions, don't you? You do, know? yeah. <laughs> So I was going to say that I looked up um, enamel beads and to make a, an enamel necklace like this, enamel beaded necklace, Yeah. It they're like $5 a piece for this size. Ooh. So it would be a $100 necklace. And you're doing earrings, necklace, you get the trays, you get the brushes. Yeah. It's an amazing bundle, isn't it? That's our last bead right there. And this one is getting drier and it's probably actually ready for me to um, use already. So when you're just dabbing that, you're wicking off any extra paint without touching it, right? Um, this with my paper towel? Yes. Yeah, so this... Uh, that's so you can keep an even, um, you get an even amount coming off of your bead each time you dab it off yeah. the side like that. Because if you were to roll it, it'll take, sometimes it takes off too much of the paint. Yeah. Um, and then. Is that just so it doesn't close the hole on the end? Yeah, so it doesn't say? close the hole and also so you don't get a big thick paint drip on the side that's that makes drying. That a lot of sense. Yeah. You're yep. also making pretty art there on your paper towel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like so, pointillism or something. So bold. <laughs> uh, this pink one I do want to layer twice because I think I did not shake the bottle well enough. So if you don't shake your bottle of um, Ultimate Paint, it'll separate a little bit and be a little bit... Um, Sit in the bottom. Yeah, so I'm just going to make sure to... So if you're doing a big batch of these, probably stirring it um, and making sure those pigments remain mixed. Is yeah, and you can stir it, idea. stir it with your bead that's on there already, you know, that's on your little head pin. Yeah, and get a bunch of beads ready to enamel because you have a lot of paint in there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like this after the live's over, I'm probably just going to use it all up and do a bunch more, um, more beads for a another necklace. Yeah, and if you want to use them for another project, you can also add glaze to extend the drying time. Right, yeah, that's use. a really good point. Okay, that was... Or if you want it super translucent, yes. you want it almost to be able to see through it. Yeah, and glaze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was really fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this bead is, I would say, is ready for. Do we want to zoom in for this part? Sure, I can take some of this stuff out of the background. Oh, actually, actually that wasn't can see it. That wasn't quite dry yet, actually. So let it sit there a little bit longer than I did. I'm just going to pop it right back on here. I think what happened with this one is we got a little bit of paint in the middle of the bead. Yeah. Um, Lori, I think that if you did do it on lava beads, you should, it will seal it up. So I would say do a decoration and maybe just roll through the center of a lava bead. It's a really pretty look if you mix paints and roll it through the center. And then you can, each end will hold the oils. So it is great with the oils too, with essential oils. 
I just need um, a wipe for this messy background I got going on. Thank you. Love that about these mats is the clean up with a wipe. So oh, yeah. nice. Did you pop in the mats? Not yet. Yeah, the mats are perfect for any time you're working on a paint project. Cleanup is way easier than anything you've like ever used. All right, and I do, while I'm letting those guys dry a little bit, I do have a finished bead that is done drying. So I'm just gonna show you how I do the link on here because it's a little different than just a plain link. I did a double uh, double loop on each side so that it would make the necklace look more weighty and almost like you have a like a double link on each of the beads and I don't know what do you guys think don't you think it adds a lot of really good weight and personality it. yeah I love it yeah really good uh, loop to have in your back pocket for simple projects like this. So basically, I just kind of measure out um, on the eye pin. I always put it right where I want it, but actually it ends up being that when this is centered, the eye pin is the exact size you need. So I don't even think I, I don't think I clipped at all. So if you get these eye pins from our kit, um, they're perfect, perfectly sized, so you don't have to do any clipping. So. And would you suggest rolling it before or during? Is it easier to roll it? During? Before, oh, before I put the bead on? Yeah. I think that it's easier to take it off. I, I think what I do is I subconsciously put it on just to measure out. But you oh, don't yeah. even need to do that because it's really is just centered. Then I took I took it off and then roll it to where I want it. And so what I did is I just kind of got rid of that first um, the first little loop of the eye pin, mm -hmm. and then just start rolling it until it's like exactly matched up. To the um, beginning. That's nice. And you just right there. roll it off to the side, right? Yeah. And then what I do here now is go on the side, like line up the beginning of the eye pin and then the end of the loop, and then just push it back to be like uh, centered. Yeah, centered. Mm -hmm centered and a oh like to that 90 degree. yeah 90 degree or perpendicular perpendicular yeah, yeah that'd be right yeah centered in the hoop perpendicular whoa my beads escaping <laughs> uh yeah and then yeah that that looked really easy and amazing yeah that was really easy i'm glad you decided to do that because we were just gonna loop it yeah a single loop and this just adds a lot of... Now, what I do here is I always use, like, to make my next 90-degree angle, I actually use this as leverage to hold the whole bead and pull because I can always straighten it out later. So now you just put that at a 90, go on the very end, and you just start rolling, and then... For anybody that hasn't done a wrapped, a double wrapped loop before, just make sure you um, line it up so it's just slightly off center because you're gonna be going right next to it. So there's a better view of that. And just lining up these two loops like that. And there you have that. Now I just straighten out um, 
with another plier, I just straighten them out like that. Awesome. So Kimberly Dawn is asking um, what product we're using, um, if it's different than the old patinas today. Well, this says, she says, is this different than the patinas that Vintage makes? Mm -hmm. So currently, we make this paint. And the old, old patinas were discontinued a year and a half ago. So this is the product. Mackie, you can explain mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so this is our ultimate paint that we use every week. Um, we always do a paint project because it is our best product that we have. And um, we developed these paints to be a better version of the patinas. And that is exactly what happened. We did name them a different name so that you could differentiate because there are differences. And we call them ultimate paint because they can do literally everything. Our paint, our old patinas, they couldn't, um, they couldn't be painted onto fabric or plastics. They would chip off. Um, they couldn't, you know. They were just thicker body. Yeah. And these are much thinner bodied, so they're so. Yeah, the patina was a little more like, almost like an acrylic type of base. Whereas, we loved it though. Yeah, and it was great. It was great for the time and it worked great for metal, but since we couldn't get it anymore, we had to come up with something else and why not make it better? So we did that and this is a bit more of like a resinous quality. So you're able to do virtually everything and it really sticks to everything except for silicone. Uh, extremely hard to get off of surfaces and that's why we love it. So that's why we named it Ultimate Paint and not patina because it is a little bit different than our um, than our vintage patinas. Yeah, and it's more like a cold enamel. Yes. So it's going to be extremely permanent on metal. Like what you're doing here, what Mackie's doing here is going to hold up the test through the test of time. I mean, it will be really, it's really really resilient. Like you would have to sand it off. Don't. Get it on something you don't want it to be Exactly, on. <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't come off. Also, oh, I wanted to show you guys a couple couple of these. I'll do a few layers on. This one looks good. I'll keep that how it is. But if you want a more um, pigmented look, I'm just going to roll it in again so you can see how, you know, how opaque and strong you can get that color. Do you find with the lighter colors that you like to do more coats to get the, the, the pigment to come through? Do you have a preference? Yeah, not really. I didn't even have to for this necklace. I only did one layer for every single one. But if you, yeah, if you I want think it's it great thicker. it's to show it, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. See how much more paint you have on there? Because I liked the texture of the bead. So yeah. I really wanted to highlight that. But if you wanted it to you know, kind of go away and become more just like a bold bead, you know, just do that. If you do one more layer after yeah. that, it's going to be like you almost can't even see those lines on the bead. I think the light, light pigment covering a dark bead or if you're covering a brighter bead um, using a uh, darker pigment. Kimberly said, does it need to be heat set once it dries? No. We, if there's... Honestly, if there is something that requires more than one step here <laughs> at our office, we're like actually not going to use it. <laughs> the only time we so, ever use a heat tool is to speed up drying time. And almost rarely do we ever do that because it's you don't have to. to. No. I think there's like, there's this burnish technique that I use it with, but it is not necessary. It's just... No. If you're extremely impatient. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. permanent once dry and drying time depends on how much paint you put on, but usually two minutes. Right. And if in permanent, yeah. ultra permanent after a day. So you can handle it, you can design with it. Yeah. That type of thing. Um, but if it will get do... even stronger. Yeah. After it's been set yeah, yeah. So 24 hours. Keep you could even, yeah. with these beads that we make today, especially if you do a few layers on them of paint, 
Um, you could just leave them overnight and then finish, you know, linking or, but if also if you're impatient, just wait like half an hour and like this one, I'm going to already do the link on this guy right here. So that this bead I did just a few minutes earlier today with you guys on and it's already, see how it's already dry and ready to go. So I'm just going to do that one as well. Show you again, show you again the technique so I can show you what it looks like when you're linking everything together. The old patinas did need to be sealed in cases, in certain cases. And yeah. these don't at all. We call them self-sealing. Yeah, and these have a little bit more of a sheen to them, which we really love for that enamel look. So, Oh yeah, again, Tracy's right, Mac. Oh, she yeah. said, um, <clears throat> I found isopropyl alcohol can remove the vintage paint if freshly applied the day of on non-porous surfaces only. Yeah. Takes some serious scrubbing to remove it later. Oh, right. Yeah. You basically have to sand, sand it off it. if you yeah. left it for mm -hmm. a decent amount of time. But it's true. So if you're in the middle of a project and you're like, oh no, oh, no I want to change it. <laughs> then that you have to do it the day of. Right. And, and if it gets it's on your scrubbing. pants, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're doomed. <laughs> Permanent. But then you can make a cute flower. There you go. So with, with this eye pin here, I just opened it up and just showing you again how to do the technique quick um, and roll all together like that. And then you'll have this nice little roll. Get, get this back up 90 degrees, line up your, uh, line up your little end of the eye pin and make a little 90 degree angle and that's ready. And this is our bead that we had used already or that we had painted already just a few minutes ago and it's already dry. I'm going to bend it at 90 again and start our roll, whoops. Okay. Helene is asking if you wanted a more opaque color, would it be would it work to lightly use the relief ink block to show the melon texture? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if it's if it's not completely set, it's going to be easier to do that um, to relief it. So while you're working with it, we could probably show that. Yeah, I, I can do that. Double, on yeah. your double colors after you finish up with your linking. Maybe at the end we could show that um, double dipped one and how it would look with the double dipped won't quite be dry enough, but I can just relieve this one. Sure. You know? Yeah. And I'm almost right, I'm almost there anyway, because I'm just gonna show one link. Do you have a relieving block right there? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I do. Yeah, I do. Great, Caddy. Then when you're doing uh, getting in to go and do all of your linking, just open up your link and string both your beads on like that and close it up and basically just repeat this step. What is it like 24 times? <laughs> and you'll have this beautiful necklace that doubles as a triple wrap bracelet and it's adjustable. You can hook into every single one of these loops. So you can make a shorter necklace or a longer one and so on. So that's all you do for that. And I'll show you quick what it's like when you relief it. So let's do. I love the adjustable quality of the necklace you created. Oh, yeah, okay. it's so great. You could even put a charm on the end and then wear it like kind of like a lariat. Oh, oh, in the yeah. front. Yeah. That's a great idea. Oh gosh, a I should have done that area. with yeah. a shell. With a shell, if we would have yeah. found the shell in time. <laughs> well, I can look for something. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I'm just holding it. Yeah. So if you wanted that that bright brass look. Yeah, that's pretty too. That's pretty. Isn't too. that fun with the lines? So you get all that texture. That was a good idea. 
that's another fun, a little more like worn look, you know, right. like we all love. So thank you for that idea. And we're going to quick put a cute, oh, look, I've got pendants here, mom, Oh, nice. that I've done. Great. These, this is from our keys when we did the keys live. That was fun. And then this one, um, I taught this cherry blossom painting on our master class. That would look amazing on this. So let's see how that looks. I already have a ring on here. I'm just going to do it with my hands. Yeah, Sherry, I agree because we always love to have the metal showing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. love relieving it. Look how fun that is with the, and then you can just clip the, um, the clasp right up front because it's pretty and just oh, yeah. goes away. That's so pretty. Love it. And you could actually just, if you had a, a bunch of pendants that you wanted, you could just put clasps on your pendants and um, clasp put it on the end. Yeah. yeah. Clasp it through both. Yeah. yeah. Or you could link, yeah, and you could um, fasten it like a choker and yes. then let it dangle down. Yes. Lots of design possibilities. Should I put it on there. and see? Yeah. Since we're all done with the live, I'll put it on and we can... Does somebody want to change the camera yes. around for me? And you have enough to um, make earrings. Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm just attaching. Coming around. Okay. So it looks, Jean was saying you could just do it like oh, that. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Yeah. Got my other pearl necklace on because I was showing how it looks layered. But um, yeah, that's a really good idea with a pendant or. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love I it. Really I love can't wear, that. wait to wear this all the time. Oh, but and can you really... show how you put that on your wrist? Yeah. Because I thought that was really beautiful. I know you'll have to take off your little cherry blossom, but I really do love the idea of just clipping it on there um, with your um, lobster clasp. I know. Okay, so yeah, I just... That was one of my favorite parts of this. What I usually do is hold the clasp with my right hand mm -hmm. um, and then go like... At the end, leave a little, and then just go like that. You can hold that for a sec if you want to get your master class preview set. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's so great, Mac. There. <clears throat> Isn't that awesome, the bracelet? Love it. Scott's going to come in good... a little closer yeah. so we can see. Perfect. Such good weight. I love how you can wear this as a bracelet. You can wear it as a necklace. You can put a pendant on it. There's yes. so many ways. And you can always add links if you need the bracelet to be a little longer or if you want the necklace to be longer. You will get a few extra beads in there if you need to do that. And then this is what it looks like if you just want it without a pendant, too. I love that, it's just too. Like layered and then you things. can adjust the yeah. length and, and let it hang down the back if you want right. it super short. Oh, like a choker. Yeah, yeah. I did that. I wanna, I'll show you guys that, too. And then if I can find the clasp. And mom's getting her master class yeah. stuff to show. Okay, yeah, good. I'm excited for this one. It's going to be so fun to watch. I know. I can't I've wait to watch it. I've seen the finished results, and I've seen some of the process, but I've not watched it from start to finish. So I know. I'm really exciting. excited to watch that as well. So I'm making this as a choker, too, just by clipping in, um, you know, as tight as you need to. And there's you have a bunch hanging down your back, which is really fun too, because I know people have been doing like those um, necklaces where they have the chain dangling down yeah. their back, like for open back dresses mm -hmm. and shirts and stuff like that. So yeah, that was so fun. And um, I hope you guys try it out. And I would love to see the colors you pick, see if you use the same ones as us and all that. Okay, we've got our awesome thing we're doing today yes. Do you want this? Yeah. and it's called dappling yeah foundation painting so this is kind of it's going to range from that abstract like that's an abstract piece to more of controlling the abstract to making it like a 
sunset and then to going as crazy as, as that. So it's just found it, creating the foundation to create incredible abstract paintings and controlling the flow. So you get that awesome. dappling light behind. This one's so amazing. <clears throat> yeah, and that one, like they can range anywhere from like, I don't know, maybe an hour to five hours, depending on how you want them to be. Like dry time or? No, just working, working time, time and how long yeah. it takes. And it's just very, very enjoyable. Same paint. And this is just gesso board. And so I'm going to teach you the foundation to create these easy paintings. So you don't have to be um, trained. Yeah, no? it's so fun. And yeah. it's so fun to watch um, you do it too. Like watching the um, little pools swirl and everything like that. It's yeah, so well, we're just doing it on a big surface instead of a mini surface. Yes, that's so awesome. Yay. Yeah. Okay, well, um, is there anything else we need to talk about before we get ready for the master class? No, I think we're all good. You did okay. a great job. I loved this one. Awesome. Well, I hope to see you guys on the master class because today is going to be amazing and our biggest project yet. Mm -hmm. So good, good day to join. And um, oh, I'm not even wearing it anymore. But <laughs> thank you for watching this awesome technique today. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye.